All right. Yeah, I got Jane's and I got Jake's. All right. I'm gonna take a drink of water real quick. And I actually remembered to hit the record button this time so I can actually just edit it later and then put it up on YouTube instead of exporting straight from Twitch because downloading it and then editing it is a fucking nightmare. You spent a f good few days fucking around with your newest friends. They seem to be on their respective paths towards... something. You're not exactly sure if self-actualization is a part of it, but you're trying not to be too bent up about it. I'm trying not to like be gross and burp into the microphone. This Earth's friend group seems to have a lot of uh, interpersonal complexity. I think, you know what, I think that might be why I don't like the Alpha Kids quite as much, just because, like, the Beta Kids are very, like, tight-nip, tight, tight-nip, god, tight-knit, and, like, they're there for each other, and they're friends, but the Alpha group is, like, really not, and they're all kind of in their own, like, little issue worlds. Yeah, the drama, but I also think that that's kind of, I mean, not personally, but, well, maybe personally, it's kind of reflective of the experience of being a 13 year old versus being a 16 year old because at 13 i mean you have your drama but like you're still kind of like that like puppy love friendship and then when you're at 16 you kind of start getting a little more like i don't want to say self-centered as in like selfish but self-centered as in like you start realizing you have issues and kind of becoming more of a cognizant person right yeah <laughs> can y'all please be 13 instead all right this <laughs> It's it's interesting writing. To be fair, you do only really know half of the friendship's quadrangle. It's probably past time to meet the other two corners of it. See what all the fuss is about, get their side of all the drama before you leap to any more judgments. You thought a lot about what you said to Jake and what you wanted to say but didn't. The shame at the thought that you might also be erring passively on the side of friendship slushes uncomfortably in your belly against the fear that you may be choosing too much, wanting too much, changing too much. Because you've thought a lot about what Jade said to you, too. And I, I, I'm i already, like, loving this route because it's, like, obviously narrative. Um, I think another thing that's very interesting about the characters, too, is, like, we all have that, like, urge to just, like, fix everything and have them have, like, a happy ending. And it's interesting to kind of, like, like, Jake is a prime example. Take a character like Jake and be, like, how can I fix this and have him still be Jake? Because something that kind of makes him who he is is his passivity and how he goes along with what others say. Because would he really be Jake if he wasn't like this? But I think that might be where I differ from the writers is because I love... I love happy endings. It's like... I, I've had too much sadness in my life to, like want more want more unresolved sadness like i think it's interesting to try and find like what's a good note to leave on this character and how what's a good way to, to develop this character and you know just create his character arc and stuff like that i'm not very like word smart right now <laughs> i'm kind of <laughs> my boyfriend just said as my boyfriend just said, I am a bit gentle in the brain at the moment. That's probably why you bothered to get Roxy's address from Jane. You can't exactly stop making new friends because you aren't ready to think about what your purpose would be without that. But maybe you could do it in the old-fashioned way this time. Yeah, I like... It wasn't... I Well, one, I don't like read as much as I used to in high school. I used to be a lot more outspoken. And even in college, I was a lot more outspoken. But... Like, this past year and COVID has not made it any better. Um, I, just, I haven't really talked to a lot of people um, at my job because I worked at the funeral home and kind of my return to the internet coincided with me leaving the funeral home. But I didn't have a lot of people to talk to aside from my coworkers. And even then, I was usually kind of doing solo work. And then now that I've been home for like a month, I don't really have anybody to talk to except for my little sibling and my boyfriend and they're usually doing their own things during the day so I don't talk I don't talk out loud 
a lot, which I probably should start practicing more because uh, I'm, I'll be like, just sort of like, I'm not very word smart at the moment. And also reading, reading and writing and stuff like that. There's a whole bunch, there, there's a whole to-do list of, like, quote-unquote things I should be doing right now. Showing up on somebody's doorstep via the accepted human method of following directions to their domicile-specific government-assigned number seems like it might be a better start than, oh, just zapping directly to them when they're taking a shit or something. Which is definitely a hypothetical situation, and not at all something that happened to you recently. That makes it sound like that's something that happened to you recently. I wonder who it was. Anyway, you came up with a plan and everything. Oh, you came up with a plan and everything! You're not a real mailman that you know of, but you've grown to appreciate and respect the profession, so you don't mind LARPing it once more. You wonder briefly if there might be other guises under which people might go up to another person's house and knock on their door, but almost none of your friends ever leave their fucking room, so you sure wouldn't know. Yeah, uh, I... I've done a lot of stuff. I used to be a canvasser for a door and window company, and, I mean, it, on one hand it was a shit job, because like, sometimes people would just yell at you or be annoying, or not be annoying, be rude to you and stuff like that, but on the other hand, I was walking like upwards of five miles a day, so I was getting like pretty fucking fit. I was getting fit, but I wasn't losing weight, because I was, because I took it, <laughs> I took it as an opportunity to just guzzle down as much food as I could, because I was losing more calories, so obviously I could take in more calories, and it was so good. I was able to eat so fucking much. Like, a, dom a domestic lifestyle sucks for me just because, like, I don't get- I- like, I can't feasibly eat as much as I want to. You sat down the street from her house and walk up the long, scary driveway through the trees, over a bridge, and up to her door. Am I- Am I imagining things? Didn't- wasn't her house, like, in the middle of the ocean, or was it, like, an island? Let's see. Roxy, house, homestuck. Am I- am I- am I imagining things? <laughs> That's a nice little- picture. God, I need to- well, I don't know if I need to catch up on Homestuck 2, but it would be nice too. Huh. That's the only image I can find, so I- no idea. Okay, so not exactly a normal human method. What, were you supposed to stroll all the way to New York from Jane's place? She'd offered you bus money, but then- but- <sighs> she'd offered you bus money, but then remembered her fortune is tainted. She- vacillated between giving you every single one of her dollars and burning it all in a symbolic bonfire until the two of you landed on moving it to a new, hopefully untraceable, bank account. You're really not sure how deep the Batter Witch's surveillance goes, but Jane seemed satisfied, at the least. She's gone through a lot. You know how it is, having to endure huge life-upending bouts of information being tossed at you more or less weekly yourself. <laughs> so, yeah. You skipped a step in your male personally sojourn, but you made it to Roxy's house in a respectable manner, which was the whole point. You're going to make the fuck out of a good impression. You knock and you wait. Oh. Oh. Okay. You you got my attention. You got my attention real good. Yeah, I am like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. Th yeah, like. I just gotta, like, take a moment and just, like, appreciate, like, like, her eyeliner, her fucking, I don't know if that's just her lips or if she has lipstick, but, like, either way, it's, like, good. And then the haircut and the, and the fucking outfit, fucking yes. Fucking get it. Fucking, she did that. I'm, like, I have, like, no words other than just fucking yes. Roxy's house is like Rose's house, but a lot more houses. Okay, and then the block is surrounded by ocean. Okay. Fucking yes. This is fucking good. Alright. The person who comes to the door is not Roxy. At least, she doesn't look like the photo of Roxy Jane showed you. Oh, fuck. Unless Roxy's a catfish! <laughs> you did not expect this. You know what? I want a version of home... I want, like... I want, like, some... 
version of Homestuck or like AU or whatever where like one of them was a catfish. I want one of the trolls to be a catfish. That would be fucking like not to use the E word, but that'd be fucking epic. <laughs> I'm like, I have to like fan myself. I'm like, <laughs> Ooh, oh, oh. <sighs> oh, it's you. This could be interesting. You blink. It is you. She got that part right. Do you know her? <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> I was, my brain was like, <laughs> I don't know her, but I sure would like to. Bro, yeah, like, th I, I like, stayed away from spoilers, so, like, I never saw this part, so I'm like, ooh, <laughs> this is so fucking good, like, adult, like, mm, 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 that's so fucking good, like, fucking chef's kiss, the little fucking, like, meatball, spaghetti, like, fingers, I don't know, I don't, I'm, I'm gesturing, but you can't see it. <laughs> You scour her features. She does seem familiar, like a friend you almost had, or did have, very long ago or moderately long ago, depending on the perspective you were looking at time from. You wonder, have the two of you met before? No, we have not, nor was I expecting the pleasure. Who is... Who's... What, what, are you texting me? Oh. <laughs> My sibling texted... My boyfriend and I, an HD picture of Peter Griffin, and said, A Lois. And then my boyfriend said, Why is he HD? And then my sibling went, A Lois. Anyways. <laughs> ah, shit. You thought you were onto something for once. Ah, shit. You thought. You thought you were onto something for once! You wonder how many more levels of memory are buried, twisted under a blown synapse in your burned out brain. You have to move forward and give up on chasing down whatever buckwild theory you're inching toward there. There are real mysteries afoot with a stranger. This feels like a decisive moment, if there ever was one. I have... I... <laughs> Catch the catfish in the river of lies. Well, obviously she's... Obviously Roxy was catfishing Jane. You know how this shit goes. It's time to sit down, just the two of you, to talk through some hard truths before asking Jane if they want to meet for a tense, but hopefully cathartic confrontation. Which you'll have to film, of course. Shit, okay, it's go time. Uh, and now my sibling has sent a HD picture of Lois Griffin and said, Hi, Peter. You take a deep breath and call her- That's what happens. When you gaze upon beauty. When, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you take a deep breath and call her out like the slick sleuth you are. You know she's been pretending to be friends with Jane online. Oh, this is far cuter than I expected. Oh, the fucking, the fucking expression. Bro, I am like, ooh, <laughs> bitch. Oh, fucking, fucking, like, I don't know how to describe it, but, like, just step on me with her, just fucking step on me. Both the situation and your little self, I mean. I have in no way been doing that. Ooh. Ooh. It is more refreshing than I would have thought, though, to be reminded that there are dramas with stakes like these out there. In the midst of all this... Her eyebrows pull together as her gaze goes right through you. You turn around, but there's nothing out there. While some of my moves, both both personal and political, have brought my path across her, uh, family, I haven't interfered directly with Jane's life, and I don't intend to start. Can you say the same, friend? Is there a way you justify the strings you're pulling? Bro, I'm like... I'm like, fuck... Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm, I'm like doing like... The little, like, twiddling your hair thing, like, Ah, oh, you're so funny! <laughs> I won't stop you, of course. I have my own matters to attend to. This is only food for thought, and I can see you are intellectually underfed. <laughs> <laughs> it 
It just might be worth your while to contemplate the repercussions of the paths you're on. Sorry, Rose. I'm like on the second to last volume of the game and <laughs> this go train ain't stopping now. Did you have any further questions or did you come all this way just for that? You really aren't sure. Man, it seems like all you do is contemplate your path. I feel all turned around inside. God, I am suddenly very fucking cold. <laughs> all my fucking my fucking attention left from fucking Mama Rose and all the fucking heat left my fucking face, so now I'm just fucking chilly. That was a lot of fucks in one sentence. Talking to whoever this is makes you feel like you stayed up too late staring at the moon and got all fucked up about exi existence till you felt too stupid to think anymore. But like in a good way. You stare blankly at her while you try to remember your purpose. I love that the little friendship the little friendship creature is just so fucking stupid. It's like, hmm this this taller woman, uh who's here and isn't what I was expecting when I came to see Roxy. Um she looks familiar, but I think obviously she's catfish, like, cause, and she just said that, like, oh, you know, it's you, and I'm like, yeah, it's me, and, like, I, I, I don't know, like, my, my, the last person I just met, you know, his grandma was Jade, and then Jane's grandpa was John, but, hmm, this, like, this, this purpley pink coated character, uh, yeah, it's just not, it's just not ringing a bell for me. I will go ahead and take that as a no. Good luck, friend. She shuts the door and you turn, bewildered, back toward the long driveway. Well, okay then. <laughs> you want MSP a reader to have brain cells? You can either have you can either have a huge heart or a huge brain, but not both. You sure met someone. It definitely wasn't Roxy, and you don't think whatever just happened counts as friendship, so you guess this one's a loss. Was it because you cheated at traveling like a regular person? Friendless and rudderless, you start the long, pointless walk of penance to somewhere. What just happened? So, I'm gathering from this that we're probably a good amount of time back in time? Because, one, adult Rose isn't dead yet. Two... There's no ocean to be seen anywhere. It's just the normal woodsy area. I don't remember much. Like, not gonna lie, I kind of like blanked out when I was reading through the Alpha Kids. But I'm guessing it was probably explained in the comic that like she, that Roxy hadn't been living in the middle of the ocean all her life. But up until now, that's I that's the uh, assumption I was under. Or MSPA reader just went a little bit too far back in time. Because I don't think... Because I was under the impression that Roxy never actually met Rose. And that, like, she... That Rose wasn't technically her mother, but, like, that they were just kind of, like, distantly... Like, not distantly related as in, like, genetically, but, like, distantly related as in, like, troll ancestors. Still in Jane and Jake's time. Oh! Oh, okay. That's right. This is all the time shenanigans. Okay. There's gotta be another answer here. Oh, wait. You're an idiot. This is an adult. <laughs> You've been spending too much time with marginally supervised aliens and a lonely marooned boy recently that you forgot that Roxy probably lives with her parents. And it's 50-50 on the possibility of a stuffed Grandma Rose somewhere in there, if the pattern holds. Is it feasible she could have told her mom about you? You play it safe, and instead of accusing anyone of online identity crime, you ask if Roxy's home. She stares at you for a moment, her lips slightly parted. You get the feeling she is not often caught off guard, and you wonder what it is you've done wrong now. Do you ever think you have lived through every possible iteration of an emotion, and then one day a manifestation of narrative agency shows up on your doorstep to remind you that there is yet another way to experience the acute feeling of a particular loss? I actually don't recall anything about what Roxy was like in Jane and Jane and Jake's timeline or I mean what happened with her and all or was she just killed or something I don't know you do what you do best and stare blankly at her trying to figure out just what in the fuck that might mean 
Oh, is that not a universal one? <laughs> well then, I can clarify. It is a roundabout way of saying no. She's not home, nor will she be, for quite a while. We don't know much about Alpha Rose or Dave at all. Yeah, I know, I mean, I know we don't, like, know much about them, per se, but just because I know how, we know how, I, God, I know, I feel like I knew that, like, Roxy, Dirk, and Jane, and Jake weren't in the same, like, timeline slash, you, yeah, because Roxy and Dirk are, like, at the end of the world, I guess, but it never occurred to me that yeah okay that makes sense that makes sense the distantly related thing then because Roxy and Dirk were are at the end of the world now and because Rose had to fight the batter witch and stuff and so I'm guessing either she herself sent Roxy for it in time or something I don't know I would offer to take a message for you, but with your bag of tricks, I think you can manage the wait. She winks at you conspiratorially, and you have never felt less like you were in on a plan with somebody. So... My brain's like fried right now. So, I'm... Basically, Ro I'm getting the impression that Rose wanted to be a mama. The scratch chest did that put Roxy and Dirk in the far future. Okay. So then... Obviously, Rose knows about it. My, my little brain is fried. This has been fun, but I'm not the one you want. I'll go ahead and make myself scarce so things can start moving along. Unfortunately for me, my path is not as flexible as yours, or hers. You've wasted considerable time here as it is, and I have my own preparations to contend with. Scoot along before you touch something you shouldn't. She shuts the door and you stand, blank and useless, on the doorstep. Maybe this isn't the right house and that lady was just having a good time fucking with you? Jane had said she hadn't used Roxy's address in forever, since Roxy didn't ever really seem to receive things she sent through the mail. And whoever this was didn't really give you any solid evidence that she knew what you were talking about. You take a minute to consider the cryptic shit the woman who is very probably not Roxy's mom just told you. You feel like a level 1 bugfoot idiot. Taking, a, uh, taking on a side quest from an enigmatic wizard so far beyond you that you feel like you should have spent way more time just grinding first. It feels like that's what she was going for. <laughs> at, at, least that, at least that feeling was intentional. I, like, I have no grasp on, like, any of the alpha kid shit. Anyway, whatever she said was something like, you could manage the weight? Maybe this one's an issue of time, not space. It always seems to be one of those two bastards, huh? Well, luckily for you, you have power over both. Might as well follow the only lead you have. You perch on the bridge over the river running in front of the house and fast forward, holding Roxy's name at the front of your mind. Ooh, this is interesting. I like I like the little transition thingy. You're swirled by you in a visual cacophony. Buildings rise up around you. Lights flash red and hot. There is a rush of busy energy, the ebb and flow of a colonial tide, and then a stillness. Right when you start to wonder if you've missed her, you feel it. You wait till it feels right, and you stop. Holy shit, that was a while. You traveled forward in time from John's era to meet Jane, you guess, so you suppose it isn't the most unfathomable thing to have to do it again, but wow. The trees that surround you just a minute ago are gone, replaced by a sea of crumbling buildings and a low, skittery sound, like pressing your ear to an ant colony. The vibes out here are real bad. You hurry up and knock. The door opens slowly. Oh! I like already see. I've already seen her like, um, her sprite, but like she's this. She's still so like cute and pretty. It's such a cute and pretty like sprite design. I love. I I love her sprite. Roxy, for sure it's Roxy this time, peeks her head out, spots you, then squints at the empty street behind you. Seeing no threat, she bumps the door open with her elbow and drops a huge pumpkin in your arms. She stumbles a bit over the door jam as she does it, and you almost don't catch the pumpkin in favor of reaching for her, but she steadies herself at the last moment and leans against the frame, unfazed. Hey, you got a little buddy. Appreciate you. God, what fucking voice did I use for her? 
I appreciate you knocking. Okay, yeah, she's gonna be southern now. It's a lot more polite than the usual ranking and entering you guys do, so I picked out a nice juicy one for you. Don't go telling everyone to try this shit, though, or else I'll never get sleep again in my life. I'll just be running produce to my door 24-7. Unloading snacks to every chess guy in existence without rest. No, but you're eating. No, but you're eating noises for company. This is not at all how you thought this would go, but you honestly should have known better than to do anything with your expectations but throw them in the trash can. So you roll with it and thank her for the pumpkin, calling her by name for max politeness. You can't see much over the flagrantly large gourd you're struggling to keep hold of, but you feel her go still. Did she stop breathing? You crane your neck to peek over the curve of pumpkin and fuck! Again with those expectations. You did not anticipate pure terror to be the emotion constructed on her face, but there it is. That's right, the little Dursite dudes can't speak, can they? <laughs> what shit did you just say to me? Uh, you said thank you, Roxy? You open your mouth again to introduce yourself as the friend Jane mentioned, but all your words shrivel up in your horrible mouth because Roxy has flattened herself against the doorframe, her head tucked down like you're blinding her. I... Uh, you're not a... This ain't my... She slinks down to the floor and kind of rolls back inside, shutting the door behind her. You hear nothing than a deep heaving sob. Oh my god, what did we do? Poor baby, what the fuck just happened? You knock politely, just once. Oh man, I gotta do something. Don't go anywhere. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. You hear nothing but footsteps trailing away into silence. It could be time to head out, but she told you to wait, so you do so. You are nothing if not committed. About 20 minutes in, the low skittering hum in the background fortifies itself into a more present rumble. From around corners and out from dilapidated doors come the source. The patter of feet, a slow, unintelligible whisper, and the clicking of joints. It's people, and they look like you. Well, almost. It's more that you look like if a child drew them. Their simple frames made simpler with softer edges. Your skin is actually skin, right? They chitter around you, and you squish your arm meats to make sure. Yeah, you aren't shitness. Whew. Wait, or is that bad? You're trying to process whether you're relieved to have the bodily makeup you thought you did, or if you're sad that the space of time you thought you might have finally found your kin was so fleeting. You don't get a chance to sort through it fully, because the new guys are surrounding you, and they look hungry. <laughs> They're gonna eat you. It might well be you or the pumpkin here, so you hold it out toward them and hope for the best. They take it and, chittering what seems to be their thanks, shrink back into the night. It's kind of fucked up that they're just bugs. You check them off your mental list of predators and sit for a beat. It feels like you're waiting for more than Roxy's return. Like, this is a moment of choice. Jesus fuck, you went to all this effort to try things a new way, and what did it get you? Nothing. You've never had such a spectacular failure to connect upon first meeting someone. So, what are you supposed to do now? Oh, I like, literally positioned myself to like, get my mouse and make a choice. You wait, but the familiar push against your ribcage to decide something doesn't come. What is this drive to make you choose anyway? What if you just wanted to sit on your ass and do nothing, huh? What if you're tired of choosing, when every choice you make takes you further from anything good? And who knows, maybe you're supposed to do nothing. Maybe that's what your plan was al all along, huh, tough guy? You don't know who that little jab was aimed at, but you want nothing more in this moment than to petulantly slap the reins of choice off your shoulders. If only there are reins to slap. God, impotent rage is the worst. After a minute of continued seething at nothing, you feel it. <laughs> Smash a window, bitch. Go and see what the chess guys know. Give up and see if Nepeto wants to hang out. Door's locked. Smash a window, bitch. Alright, well, I'm gonna see if Nepo wants to hang out. What? What? Hello? <laughs> you can't just make it disappear after I click on it! That's like writing out a question that you don't want to answer on your math test. Bruh! <laughs> I wonder... Is 
Okay. That... Bitch. I- I'm late. I'm miffed. <laughs> I'm cheesed. I'm like, fucking... Wow. Okay. They did that. Let's go see what the chest got- What?! F Why do you keep giving me choices if there's nothing that I can do?! <laughs> Blinking, you feel the desire to act ebb away. It's replaced by a tingly gr giddiness at the victory of your, what, inertia? You'll be kind to yourself and call it fortitude and resolution instead. You're gonna see this. <sighs> I don't know how to feel. Like, on one hand, yes, king, but on the other hand, like, you gave me... <laughs> Motherfucker. You're gonna see this shit through. You do what you promised and wait. Eventually, you curl up on the welcome mat and pass out like a stray kitten. At some point in the night, you open your eyes for one bleary moment as a chess guy lays a blanket over you. Aw, oh, that's sweet. Aw, she's so cute. The creak of the door next to your ear jolts you awake. Towering above you in the sharp, bright rays of the morning sun is Roxy. Oh shit, you are real. I came out here just so I could prove to past Tipsy me that it was just a daymare or some shit, but... Now, here you are. What was that? Now, here you are, and here I am. So, let's dig right in. Did you or did you not say human English words, including my name, to me last night? You, uh, you did do that? Well, time to wreck in with this then, I guess. I might still be a little buzzed, so I'm just gonna see how this plays out. Stick with me. She beckons you inside and you scramble to your feet and follow her. All that waiting paid off, didn't it? You emanate smugness in every direction as you walk, just in case there are any entities or narrative concepts around that have the capacity for feeling slighted by such a thing. You trail behind her into the living room, explaining how you knew her name via her friends. I love the, like, painting on the wall. Aw, poor Roxy. <gasps> Kitty! Kitty! Bruh! The fucking kitty, the fucking, the fucking, the, the fucking, 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 the this is like, kitty! Alright, I'm over it. Yeah, I'm fine. It's just a little key cat. <laughs> oh, not that. Let's see. Um, How do I fix this? Scale filter. Oh, it won't let me resize output. Lovely. Okay. Um, The display is going to disappear for a solid moment. And then fix it. There. <laughs> it's all better now. Okay, that makes more sense, LMAO. That'd make you the one who commits Jane of the stuff about our reality that I've been trying to get to her. Trying to get her to see for quite some fucking time. The benefits of being able to be there to show her in person, I guess. Oh, her expressions are so good. I love her, like, eyeliner. I love, like, the lipstick. I love her design. It's just so good. I love how sassy the kitty on her shirt looks. She stands next to the She stands next to the couch, her shoulders bunched up, popping her fingers. She isn't looking at you. She told me you could time travel, but she failed to mention the part about how you're some kind of alien. Alien, sorry to offend. But if I'm being real, it's not like our communication style is full of truly well gaps on a normal day. So this checks out. She scrunches up her face and groans. God, I love her sprite. Ah! I'm so sorry. I'm being a jelly belly dip rag downer. Um, what in the fuck is wrong with me? Baby girl! Here you are. A friend in the flesh. And I'm just over here whining away about my other friends who I love very much. This is just a lot, LMO. I'm not liking this voice. I've daydreamed. I... 
I want a different voice. I've daydreamed all the potential friend friend meetings and I don't let me I've daydreamed all the potential friend meeting scenarios I thought might ever happen. When y'all win it, when I am trying to hum 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 yum hum 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 a lot of people, and all the friend-making skills you've learned in your travels didn't save you from fucking this one up. There's no one full prey f f f f There's one- No! There's no one full prey f There's no one full proof way to do it, you figure. You would know as a proven fool. Oh man, that's good. That is good to hear. Still, I'm sorry about ditching you right off the bat. I went to find a small sip of courage, which turned into a swig of courage, and that became a whole ass bottle of courage, which, as you know, can happen. So I did not so much come back outside to confront my harsh reality. Re re real titties. Realities. Namely you. As I did confront the soft real titties of my pillow on the floor next to my bed. Anyways, it's just uh, I've never heard my name come out of someone's mouth. Oh! That might be the saddest goddamn thing I've ever heard got said. Anyways, it's just that I've never heard my name come out of someone's mouth right next to me in real life before. Oh my god. That is literally, like... My heart aches. My fucking heart aches. You don't comment on the booze thing. Y'all just met and you don't want to come off too preachy just yet. You try another angle instead. You could always... Try the meeting thing again? Like, acting it out? Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> of course you didn't mean literally going back and redoing it. Um, this is a salvageable situation and you don't want to waste a redo if you don't have to. Oh, I... What you mean is you really get shit right the first time and try anyway. Might as well give each other a clean slate. You hold your fist up and knock on the air in front of you. You hope she thinks this is cool and not lame, so you just kind of lucked into it to avoid thinking too much about all your false starts. You don't have to worry for long, because she smiles and it's brilliant. The shivering tension in her body shifts from anxious to excited as she hops a bit, getting into the moment. She breathes in, smoothing her shirt, and then puts her a hand to her ear. God, I love Roxy. I fucking love Roxy. Oh? Is that a knocking on my door? Whom's ever could it be? She bends dramatically in welcome as she opens the invisible door and clasps her hands together as she focuses her bright gaze on you. Oh. My. Fucking. G. Welcome to my abode, stranger! Soon to be more than stranger, walk on. Get on in here and let's go. Let's get... Get on in here and let's get to Frienditude. That might be coming on a little strong for typical company, but luckily you are as friend thirsty as they come, even without old golf ball nuts forcing you to be... Golf ball nuts. That's so... <laughs> you introduce yourself and step over the pretend threshold. Hand extended. Roxy takes it and pulls you into a t fast, tight hug. God, I'm like... I love this. You wrap your noodly arms around her and return it as tight as you can. At first, you tell yourself she needs it. After all, oh, you can, after all, you can feel her trembling back. <laughs> I'm like, I have tears. You wrap your noodly arms around her and return it as tight as you can. At first, you tell yourself she needs it. After all, you can feel her trembling back, her unsteady breath. A minute passes and you realize your hands are shaking too. When was the last time you just held someone? Just let yourself be held. Ugh. 
The moment is quiet. You know it's an awkward pose. The two of you standing, draped on each other in the middle of the house, and you realize belatedly that lying on the floor, there's a window like the one you fell through right before you. Jesus, how did how did you get out of Doc Scratch's apartment? Now is not the time to think about that, but it's good. Calm. You could keep going, honestly, but she steps back and tucks a puff of her a puff, 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 puff of hair back into place, clearing her throat. She's still looking away from you, but she's grinning. Yeah, that was much better. Cop lot of friendship starting pros, am I right? The right guys to friendship about the two of you, you say. She sits down on the couch and gestures for you to join her. So you do. Now that you're settled, which she said right before you did your little skit, hits your brain right in the face. Has she really never had anyone else around to speak to? Like, never? Never have I ever. What about the, uh, chess guys, as she called them? The ones she mistook you for. Oh, we can communicate for show, but not with words, really. I don't mean anything bad about them by it. They're really sweet when they aren't sneaking in my home. Plus, I don't blame them for their ways. On account of them being brought in by the Batter Witch and summarily forgotten. But, I don't know, we're not really on the same wavelength. So it just kind of fucked me up when I thought one of them was like looking me in the eyeballs and saying my name like I was, like I was, oh, woo! Sorry, I'm still mega new to this. Her eyelids flutter closed as she shivers. Man, you thought Jake had it rough, but at least he had his grandma for a bit before she died. You wonder to yourself why she doesn't seem to have someone, to have had someone like that. You're about to do some mental math, but... And see if you can work some connections out. But she gathers herself and interrupts you before she can do anything too smart. And to be clear, I can just see the difference between you guys now. Though you don't not look like them, to be itch. It's just that you have a quality of, like, personhood to you. Anyway, the point is the resemblance is certifiable. But you're like the Velveteen chess guy. The what? Just because you're soft? Oh, well, yeah, that too. But, no, you know, like, the Velveteen Rabbit? It's one of a few books my mom left me that wasn't super dense in cerebral wizard fiction. Wizard. So I read it a lot before I got grown enough to really appreciate the complexity of cerebral wizard genre. Oh, uh, you know I like wizard actually. No, you don't know that one, but you are constantly searching for meaning in your fucking life, so you will definitely check it out if there's someone like you in it. And she just mentioned her mom. She's not still around then, is she? Nah... Better which killed her a long time ago. Before I ever got here. Back when society was uncollapsed and everything. But she knew I was coming, so she left me pretty well stocked with snacks and reading material and booze to last a lifetime. Though I have to put a considerable dent in that last category, so we shall see if her planning skills truly were up to par when all said and drunk. I thought maybe I was going to get to meet her and all my other friends in this big-ass RL multiplayer game I was going to kick ass at, but... No, I don't know. I guess not. I'm not playing anymore. Shit. You jump up as you put two and two together. You went to the past before, or, well, you came from the past, but Jane, from Jane and Jake's time, which Roxy already knows, but spatially, you were here in this house, then in that time. There was a woman who lived here before the... There was a woman who lived here then. You thought she was Roxy's mom at first, but then you maybe convinced yourself she wasn't since a few hundred years happened between her and now? You don't know. A lot was going on. Oh, I think J, what? Why she powerful? Hold on, let me show you. Roxy roots around a bookshelf for something and your brain starts expanding at a rapid rate. Concepts that have been hovering on the periphery of your mind suddenly converge. You already knew that Jane and Jake's deceased grandparents were your friends from the past, but you hadn't considered this since you didn't know Roxy lived in the future then. Of course all this shit's connected. Of course that would make... Does she look like this? She hands you a book, cover open, to show the author photo. There she is, younger than she was when you first when you saw her that her saw her last night, but older than she was when you first met. You can't help but saying her name out loud. Rose. Oh my god Why did grown up her say you'd never met before though? Is she not the same person? Fuck the earlier math you Fuck the earlier math you're doing, this is way bigger than two plus two. This is some serious mental calculus. You wiggle all your brain worms at once, and it hits you. The way it felt different than normal when you hopped from Jake's house to... wherever that one place was. How it happened when you brought Jake home again, too. 
Like your guts dissolved sideways, how they rearranged slower once you landed. Had it happened when you first landed in Jane's yard, too? You're probably too turned around to even notice then. You know Roxy's super hyped right now, but you tell her you gotta check something. Do some science. You'll be right back. You zap backward again. <laughs> what did I tell you about coming back here? Get your grubby time fingers out of my pie before you get caught. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Have a good day, ma'am. Okay, she's mad, which you expected. It also felt like an everyday wiggle-bellied time jump, which you also expected. You pop out of there, this time concentrating on your friend Rose, just a day after you last hung out. You should have felt yourself zoom further back toward her, right? Off you go, and wrong. It's that feeling again. That sideways dissolvement and reconstruction of your crudely rendered bowels. Oh, it's you! Long time no see. For you, I assume. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Funny thing about that is no, actually, but you'll have to explain later. You apologize for paying her so short a visit and head back to Roxy. The feeling accompanies you yet again. You pop back into Roxy's living room a fraction of a second after you left. Those brain worms are wiggling at top speeds. Damn, babe, I know you don't know this about me, but I love science projects. I got a whole lab and everything. I'm hex of qualified. Wanna take me with you? Oh. Sorry, you already went. Fuck, there I go blinking and missing all the good shit. For the best, TBH, for else I'd have sat here worrying that you'd never come back. Abandonment crisis, totes avert it for the moment. High five. What rad science fact did you learn? Fuck, shh. <laughs> What's about my mom? You take a deep breath. You're kind of laying down the knowledge tracks a second before your brain cart rolls down them, so you're hoping this makes sense as you piece it together word by word. God, I've like... I know that it would go fucking disastrously to take Roxy back to like adult mom or adult Rose, but like every fiber in my being is like craving it. You think... This is a different universe. Yeah, what? You've met the woman Roxy thinks of as mom, but you also have a friend named Rose from a while ago. She's friends with Jake's grandma and Jane's grandpa, and you're pretty sure she even read you some of the same fucking book at one point. But they can't be the same exact people, even if they all look the same. Things feel different there than they do here. Like looking in an inside-out mirror with every cell of your body. Those definitely don't exist, don't worry. How else do they are? I'm following you. We'll love to gaze inside one of those mirrors and flip my shit some way. I'd be a liar if I said I've never thought about that as a general concept. But that's besides the point. More importantly, what you're saying is I have double the moms I thought I had yesterday. Also, you're saying you can, like, go visit any and all moms whenever you want. Just going to mom visiting Bender. No rules, just moms. And can I come? And I can come along. Well, no, there are a couple of rules, but other than that, yeah. Damn, you thought you, she might take more convincing. Look around all my gear and cat clones and general living situation, bud. All I'm saying is none of that is particularly hard to believe. And after all the grief I endured trying to get Janie to believe me. It'd be pretty fucking stupid not to mention rude, and it'd be pretty fucking stupid and not to mention rude as heck of me not to believe you now. You're my friend. I love her. Phew, that's a relief. Your grasp on this shit is tenuous at best, so it's good she is so easy to win over. It has one of my best qualities, or at least one of my biggest ones. Oh, though, before she gets too excited, one of the rules does seem to be that her mom in this universe doesn't want to be visited, though. That's kind of a big one. Oh. I see. Well, did she say why? I mean, if y'all already hung out, what's so bad about one more chill sesh? Unless, I don't know. It's okay for you, but... You can see her start to blame herself, so you cut her off. It's definitely not that she didn't seem interested. More like she couldn't? She shooed you away every time you tried to say hi like she was afraid you'd fuck shit up, which, to be fair, you do regularly. She said she was preparing for something. You look around. Or someone. 
Oh yeah, okay. Makes sense. It's funny, actually. No, I'm joking, your leg, it sucks. But like, situationally, it's funny. Because that game I mentioned that Janie's off destroying. A week ago, I wasn't even sure if I wanted to play. I was pretty ready to go to desperate measures to not play it at all if I was being totes honest. But... But... Then when Jane said she met you and was all hellbent on doing some righteous smite into the whole company, I don't know. Hit me that I kind of did want to play after all. Like I thought maybe I'd meet my mom in the game and I'd finally get to talk to this lady I built my whole ass sense of self around. Get to see how she is in real life, actual life, and figure out how bad I fucked it up, my version of it. Well, anyway, we're, we aren't playing, so it didn't matter. I've been trying to uh, be a good friend to lend my hacker skills to Jane's cause, but it hurt, and I don't know how to tell her. But I, I keep skipping forward. Uh, you showed up, my option shifted like 75 more times. I barely got time to come to terms with it being okay to want some before it gets swiped away from me, oh well. Shit, you really didn't mean to mess with her expectations. You should have kept your mouth shut till you figured out what all this meant. She smiles at you, and you don't have to have known her for long to tell that it's forced. Ah, shit, you can fix this. One more visit! One more visit! One more visit! I know it's the bad end, but one more visit! One more visit to this universe's rules couldn't hurt, right? Hey, who knows, maybe her mom wouldn't mind another visit if you brought Roxy along. Like, maybe she was just annoyed when it was your bothersome self. She was definitely a little sad when she talked about Roxy living so far away. Temporally speaking. I mean, one way to get around her being pissed off that you're visiting again is just see her before you saw her the first time. You really think? I mean, if you don't think she'd mind. I'd be 100% down, locked and loaded, ready to family bond right the fuck now. Before I get too nervous, change your mind. What does that smell like popcorn? Huh? What do you have? What is it? Oh, why does it smell like popcorn? Is that the rest of it? Love of my life. Keeper of my soul. Babe. <laughs> Is that the rest of it? Okay, good. We have all that brisket left. Just put, you can put cheese on it. You're able to put cheese on things, you fucking northerner. <laughs> I love you. Before I get too nervous, change my mind. Should we partake in a celebratory sip before we go? No. She reaches under her couch and pulls out a bottle of vodka. You make a non-committal noise as you work out how to respond. You call Jake out for enabling this, so you don't want to do the same. It's delicate, though. What am I thinking? She'll probably have her own stash anyway. I else wish she left such vast quantities of this stuff for me to reckon with? Uh, yeah, I guess. Though, maybe she meant for her to bust into it when she was a bit older? Or, like, maybe for special occasions? Well, saddle up, and we can add that one to the list of questions they ask her. It's gonna be pretty far down, though. I got a lot. You extend your hand, she takes it, and off you go. You choose a point a little further ahead in Rose's timeline. Just give her time to miss you. Just in case. Bro, why not go earlier? The world's gonna be fucking en- This is gonna be devastating. I'm not sure if I'm ready. I'm not sure if I'm ready. You zap to the doorstep to ease Roxy into it. She plasters herself to the wall next to the door, breathing heavy. You take care of the knocking part. Oh shit, boy. This is it. Look at all these fucking trees around my house. Holy shit. Ooh. Old Rose comes to the door, and from the look on her face as she stares you down, she has absolutely not missed you even a little bit. Ah, my incorrigible male person. What did I tell you before? You should not be here, or now. Her imperial bane of my existence may not be paying attention to what you do with your friends, but she's keeping tabs on me after your last visit. It isn't safe for you to... Isn't safe for you here, and I can't have you compromise this location. 
From the side, Roxy exhales. Rose turns. Oh my god, this is- I, my- I have such a sick feeling in my stomach right now. Her voice is soft and broken, snow falling from branches. Oh. Mm, sorry, Miss Mom. Momland? Roxy. We didn't mean to bust down operations. I just wanted to meet you. No, I know. I know it. Oh! <laughs> I can't. This is literally, like, going to be the death of me. I don't know how to handle this. I just know something bad is, like, going to happen, too. Like, I just know that this is going to have to be, like, the bad end. <gasps> and despite the circumstances, I am so glad to have been able to see you, too. More than you know. <laughs> but you can't stay. I'm in so much pain. I'm in so much emotional pain right now. Uh, of course, yeah, no worries, I'm sorry. You have to go right now, before... A light streaks through the clouds and you crane your neck to see it, but Rose grabs you both and drags you inside, slamming the door. Shit, this is bad, right? Fuck, she's even faster than I thought. I'll have to call Dave, I have to... She stops muttering to herself and speaks instead to you and Roxy with a sharp, decisive turn of her head. What's done is done. Get back before there's nothing to get back to. But Rose touches her knuckles to rock. <laughs> oh, the music. God, I'm like in so much pain. I'm gonna cry. Rose touches her knuckles to Roxy's cheek, and you feel like you shouldn't be here for this moment. Shouldn't have brought her here. Shouldn't have done anything ever. You never learn your fucking lesson. You do the only th good thing left for you to do, and take Roxy's hand. She's still sputtering, pulling you as she reaches towards Rose. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. There is a low rumble. The house shakes. Rose has... Oh my god! The house shakes. Rose has pulled some knitting needles out of nowhere and they're sparking with energy. The fucking tear! The fucking music! I'm like, oh bro, I'm dead right now! Oh my god. This is like one of my most favorite Homestuck songs too. Like, I literally listened to fucking Cascade on repeat over and over. Oh my god. I'm hurting. My- I'm- oh, I'm deceased. Hi, I'm in pain. Oh yeah, you, you don't keep away from spoilers. <laughs> I do! <laughs> now. When you open your eyes again, you're in Roxy's version of the same living room. Or almost that. You know it's hers, though it's- Oh no! You know it's hers, though it's decorated more sparsely, and there's a corner of the house that's just fucking gone. We're built how the surrounding buildings were with a rickety chess guy patch job. Shit. Shit. You stop surveying the timeline damage and instead look to Roxy. She's just standing. Staring. Blank. Her hand is over her mouth. You are so... So sorry. You never should have suggested they do that. It's probably best for you to go. All you do is make things worse. I am in so much pain right now. The slackness in her f No, she- No, she doesn't want to be left alone because you're the only other fucking being that- Oh my god. The slackness in her face turns to panic. I don't know, please. I shouldn't ask to go. It's my fault. Don't leave me. Oh. Bro. I'm hurting. In your guts, you know you're the one in the wrong. You are supposed to be the responsible time traveler. You don't know how to make her see this without making her feel worse. She runs and opens it. 
Oh no, baby, no! She runs and opens a cabinet, then a second and a third. Her movement's more frantic each time. Eventually she surfaces, successful. Oh, fuck, thank- Oh, I forgot how to do the voice! I'm just in, like, so much- f <gasps> Oh, thank fuck, the booze is still here. Always looking out for me, that mom! Look, it's okay. We can still have fun! You don't have to go, please don't go. She's crying as she talks, her voice climbing higher with fear. Her smile is begging you. God, I'm in s <sighs> You know you'll have to look later. Check whatever corners of the internet or historical documents Roxy has laying around to see what happened. But you feel in your belly that it will only confirm what you su suspect. It would be better if she hated you. You're not ready to face what you did, so you take the bottle Roxy's holding out toward you. Take a long, burning swig. More for you means less for her, you hope, as you pass the bottle back. So much pain, <laughs> dude. Fuck, my heart hurts so bad. Moms are cool, but so are friends. It's not just moms you tell her. You can definitely take her to go see any one of the friends she already has too. Oh my god, I need a fucking second. Oh. oh my god. God, I'm... Oh. Alright. <sighs> Why, like right now? If she wants, yeah, you're down for whatever. Uh, is it weird to be so nervous about that? Don't get me wrong, I want to see the fuck out of some friends. Plot my eyes right on those guys. Followed, of course, by hogs. Hugs. It's just a really big thing and I'm feeling a little dizzy even thinking about picking one. Just take her to see little little baby Rose. Yeah, you haven't met all her friends yet, but you know just enough about all the various dynamics for that to make sense. And hey, there's no need to rush. You could take her somewhere else, just the two of you. That way she can still get out of the house and see something new and you guys can sit and talk through who to go see rather than leaping right in. Yeah, okay. That sounds chill. I think my voice for her has changed like five fucking times. Where to then, my cosmic taxi friend? Let's start with somewhere chill, you say, and she nods. Like many things about Earth, there are places you know exist, but that you have no memory of ever having been to. They're just a part of your cultural knowledge, learned by your past self and later subsumed into the ever-widening miasma of your mind. You pick one of those places, somewhere that feels like, at one point, it could have been something you cared about. It looks like a forest at first, but the pine trees have been shaped by wind. You turn, and the earth in front of you butts up against the ancient stone of an outcropping. It stretches out below your feet in a long, striated arc until it curves into nothingness. Beyond it is an endless sea of mountains, rolling and rolling, fading deep green to blue as they turn into the sky. The sun is just below the horizon. Ooh. Are we in... are we into Smokies? Oh? It's so... open! Her voice is the quietest it's been since you met her, and also the exact opposite of how I just sounded. Her bright, boisterous charm lulled into awe. You ask her if she thinks this will work. Are you shitting me? Buster, I have never seen a more gorgeous thing in my entire existence. We are going to take a fucking seat and soak in this nature with any one of our pores. The visible ones, I mean. Don't go getting any ideas. Or do, TBH. She could be doing naked cartwheels right now and I wouldn't even notice because I said, as I said previously, my eyes are slurping up these sides. Fair. You're not agile enough for that, cult or otherwise, but you're glad she likes it here. The two of you sit for a while, soaking it in. This is a schedule-free life you lead, so however long it takes her takes for her to talk is fine with you. 
Doesn't take too long, though. So... You met Jane. Jake, too, if I'm not wrong. They talked about you some, but they've been more busy hanging out with you than talking about you if I'm BTH. How about, um... Strider? He hasn't said anything about you, and I like to think he'd tell me if he got the first visitor of his whole life, but maybe he wouldn't be ready to share with me. That's a pretty big thing for me, and for him, it'd be even bigger. She seems poised to continue hypothesizing about him for a while, so you go ahead and tell her that, no, you haven't met him, but you sure have heard a lot about him from Jake. Ah, uh, oh yeah. What, would you get a different version of things from her? I don't know. How far in this drama you want to get? You're already pretty far entrenched as far as you can tell, so she might as well fill you in on the rest. Okay, so, I'm about to lay it all out there for you. Because I trust you and also I don't know what to do about it all, and some farm fresh up hands might be just what I need. The way she turns to you and clutches her hands together, launching directly into the story, you never think she was new to slumber party gossip. We got quite the love quadrangle going on down in this friend group. Jenny and Dark are both in a jerk, which, like, fair. He's very sweet and hunk no matter how you slice it. Jake, as you may know, is a wild card here. No idea who we might go for, which is also fair. If I am to continue to be a referee here, because Jane is a stone cold fox, luscious babe, going heck of places, and Dirk is. Whoa! He's just about perfect. So. She trails off and wrinkles up her nose as she looks back over the mountains. Her gaze is heavy with longing. Hmm. Don't you, me? What? Just seems like she's leading up to her spot in the quadrangle is all. Yeah, well, I'm in there. Like in the last one I mentioned. Uh, okay. What? You're doing it again. Oh, just for a minute, you couldn't tell which direction she was headed. You thought she might be jealous of Jerk himself, the way she looked when she said all that, but it's that she has feelings for him? You're trying to keep- you're just trying to keep up. Roxy laughs and covers her, covers her face. God damn, caught out here on top of the fucking world. You're not wrong, I guess. In a way. Not to continue the vicious call out, but earlier it was her mom she said she tried to be like and now it's Dirk? You're like the president of the universe at trying to figure out who you are and trying on different ways of being to s see what fits, so no judgment there. It's just that it seems like she has a whole lot of questions about who she wants to be, which is legit as hell. That's life, baby. Yeah, I guess that's the whole thing, you know? I wanted to be like her because she's my because she's my family and like the only person I knew about for so long. Then I met him and I was like, oof, there's more unlockable options? Who knew? Maybe I could, uh... I don't know, I, if I... I don't know, I do have feelings for him, to be sure, but you're right. Sometimes with him, it does get all mixed up. It's that, it's that gender feeling, baby. You ever not sure you want to be somebody or be with somebody? I mean, like, I like the me I made from nothing. I mean, I like the me I made, I made from nothing. I don't want every single piece of his bullshit, of course, but... He's like the shadow just out of my range of vision, like... Some kind of what if. Me if I'd just been... Ugh, I don't know if it's making any sense outside my own head, though. What's that you said about the turn, that turnways mirror? Let's hop on that universe jumping train and see where it takes us. Metaphorically, I mean. I'm not ready to move a single ass cheek off this bitchin' rock just yet. It's all metaphorical anyway. Well, not the multiple universes thing. That's pretty much a fact, as far as you can tell. But the turning yourself inside out bit. Whatever it is about him that she feels pulling at her, this thing she wants for herself, is probably bigger than him anyway. He's just the person who made her notice it. Same as it was with her mom. And anyway... Sorry, my lips are like super chapped and like as I was talking a little like this is gross but like a little like skin flake just like came off into my mouth and it was unpleasant. And anyway, it turns out lots of options are unlockable once you realize some locks were in your brain to begin with. Damn, buddy. Is this what it's always like to talk to friends face to face? Hauling up piles of deep meaningful truths left and right? Or is this just a you thing? It happened again. It's time for some chapstick. F in the chat for me. 
You have absolutely no way of knowing, but you do know that it happens to you a lot. It's different every time, though, and it never gets old. Good, because I feel like this got up layer one of all my thoughts. Good, because I feel like this got up layer one of all my thoughts and feelings about this stuff. I'm a little afraid to do dig deeper, but if you're there with me, maybe we'll find some shit in there. Not just big empty question marks. Shit, yeah, you can go for round two whenever. Your game digging at identity all day if she wants, though. They did come here to decide who to visit, right? Does this mean the choice is Dirk? I'm not sure if I'm... I don't think that we... That the... Um... I don't think that the readers used she, her pronouns for Roxy at all this route. I think it's just been they. That just kind of caught my attention. Which is pretty awesome. And then combined with like the... I mean, not to be like a gross adult staring at like some kid's chest, but like... Binder-esque. Could be binder, could be lack of something. Who knows? But I love it. God, I don't- wait, did I even read that last one? Yes, I did. God, I don't know, man. Yeah, maybe. Eventually. I want to see all of three of them, plus another friend I haven't mentioned yet, but you get along with her, because she's also an alien. It just occurred to me to- I got excited, because I was like, wait! Okay, I'm going to apologize, because... I say her name like this <laughs> out of out of uh, habit. I know it's like Calliope, but like I say Calliope, so I'm sorry. I say Calliope. I just say Calliope. No, just because like we're Northerners, it's like Calliope. Yeah. I got excited because I was like Calliope, Calliope, Calliope route, and then my stomach like sank to the bottom of the pit and went Caliborn route. But I might want to start with my kid mom who was visible. Not yet, though. Uh, I never would have thought I'd be putting this off any longer than I had to, but... Meeting you has been one of the best things I ever did. I want to sit and stew in this friend soup with you for a bit longer. I think this is so pure, and it speaks a lot to, like, Roxy's character, not character as in like narrative character, but like character as a person, even though I know she's fictional show. Um, that like a lot of the others have just kind of been like, I don't know how to describe it. Kind of like you're helping them, but you're not really like making friends, but like in this route, you actually are bonding with Roxy. It's not just like observing someone's like internal like internal issues and trying to help them through it like this is one of the routes that I feel like you actually like make friends with one of the characters and that like you could see yourself actually like continuing to visit this person like I think what just an example but like Aridin's route I can't, I can't see the reader going back to visit Aridin unless it's like to see him so like I know the reader has very loose um, definitions of friend. I like I wouldn't consider Aridin a friend. <laughs> it's more like you you helped him out a little, but you're not like friends who would like hang out and talk about stuff. And even though you're still helping Roxy out, like she's just happy to spend that time with like the MS with you, the MSPA reader instead of like jumping off to go do all this other stuff i don't know i just think it's a really nice uh kind of slow down and change of pace from jane and jake's routes i mean i don't like jane and jake that much but and it's most likely a lot of my like preferential bias over the characters but i i i'm really liking this route a lot also jane and jake's routes were very short which, I guess, makes, I guess, in context of what I'm talking about, it makes sense why I would prefer this route over the others. And then save the bites of my other friend soups when I can. However ready to eat or not I might be. 
Shit, this meta file is getting away from me. Can you take over? You're not sure how salvageable it is, but yeah, you're down to simmer with her as long as she wants. And you think she and her teen mom will get along very well, shared mom trauma and drama included, whenever it comes time to introduce them. She shouldn't worry about being perfectly ready, either. You haven't skipped ahead to see who she becomes, but you're pretty confident she has it in her to be someone she can be proud of and comfortable being. Oh, okay, there is she. There is she, her pronouns. I like that it's been going back and forth between she and they. Someone that can look back on this Roxy with kindness, too. No matter what choices she ends up making. Roxy is like... Like, I know I'm a dude, but like... When I wasn't a dude, she was like very like lesbian awakening. I don't really identify as it as much anymore, but like... But definitely early on when I was first like transitioning, I was definitely like male but like lesbian. Because gender and sexuality is weird and humans have to create things in society. We live in a society, unfortunately. You're going to make me cry again, please no. Woo. Also, not that I'm going to forget today ever, but I should document. She pulls her phone out and holds it up to frame her shot. Oh, Sophie. She's going in the light of sun of sunrise. You watch her. You watch the sun. You watch the fog curl through the valleys below. Okay, now a selfie. She, aw, she drapes her arm over your shoulder and points the camera at the both of you. Work it! Oh yeah, that one's cute as fuck. She messes with her phone, opening a chat with someone whose handle you don't recognize. You wonder, as she sends the photo their way, if it's the alien friend. Be cool if Roxy was friends with a troll you hadn't met yet. Hey, you there? I guess not, but it's okay. I just wanted to say hi. I know we didn't talk about much about the game not being on anymore last time we got to chatting, but I know we were both feeling it, and I got so many more updates for you when you're back online, so get hype. And check out this choice-ass view I'm peeping right now as a preview. Thank of you, talk to you later. It's time to get comfy on this rock. You may end up being here for a while since Roxy's not quite ready to get zapped anywhere else, which, when you consider it, is fine. There is a difference, you think, between inaction and patience. There are small, weighty changes made in stillness. You, worried you choose too much, and Roxy, afraid she is robbed of choice from the start, meet in the middle. She pockets the phone and grins at you. You lean back on your elbows and tilt your head up toward the sky. God, I fucking love- I love- I love Roxy, and I love her fucking everything. Alright. We really only got one choice, I think. No. No, our first choice was the catfish one. Alright, and then credits as per use. Oh, wait. I forgot it wasn't like... Oh. I never looked at the <laughs> warnings for, uh... 13. Alcoholism. Alcoholism and underage drinking. Alright, credits as per the huge executive producers Andrew Huss, Cindy Dominguez, who I keep. Julian Dominguez. I keep forgetting what their Twitter handles are, but I, I can't really be asked to care anymore. <laughs> Aisha, uh, Hussey, Roach, Turnbull. Uh, that's right. Le Lalo wrote Roxy. Okay. Watch. Let's see, Roxy. Haven Daniels Taylor. Yeah, I, I love their fucking art style. Like, some somebody was like... Or not somebody. I just remember when it was a thing that, like, a lot of people were complaining about their art style. And it's like, I like it. I love it. It's like, it's a comic-y art style. Like, if I ever get rich, like, and want to make a comic, like, that'll probably be the person I go to. Uh, I keep forgetting who I played. Who am I looking for? Roxy, 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 Roxy. Courtney Brendel. As per usual. Ending illustrations. Uh, Courtney Brendel. UI designer. David Turnbull. Audio director. James Roach. James Roach. James Roach. James Roach. James Roach. Would you believe this was for something else? James Roach. James Roach. Oh, here's another one. Clark Powell. Yeah, even in death. That's... I... I forgot the name of it, but yeah, that's the song I like. 
game design and programming. And then Andrew D. Kohai did volume tw volumes 12 and 13. Huh, cool. And then I noticed that this was new the last time I played Pastor Quest, because this wasn't here before. But yeah, actually, I think they merged with Fellow Traveler after I kind of quit the internet for a while. Operations! I don't know any of these people, and I'm pretty sure that they're just supposed to be there. Alright. And with that... Help. With that, I'm gonna act end, because I've been... I, I think this is the longest I've streamed. I've been streaming since... When I looked at the clock, I started around 4.30, but I'm looking at my Twitch stats and it says 1 hour and 54 minutes, I think. Unless I don't know how to read the stats, so hopefully I didn't, like, miss half the fucking stream. Oh no, it says I've been recording for 2 hours and 40... I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, thank you for coming, and Antoinette. I'm sorry, I can't say I can't say words or things. And I can barely pronounce my own name half the time. Oh, and also thank you to the extra three people who are in the chat, or who are watching. I never noticed. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and I also have to go feed my darling little baby boy. So thank you for coming, and have a good night. Yes, I will. I'll message you. Um, I might... What's tomorrow? Was Is today Thursday? Today's, today is Thursday. I... We'll probably do it tomorrow, sometime. Um, I'll message you and make sure you're actually online before I do anything. Alright. Peace. Have a good night, y'all.